talked about the way you stare into my eyes Am I supposed to go ahead and just erase Every feeling, every memory we share Is it snow or is it snow? Snow, like the weather. That is so cool. I can only imagine how many times you've heard people pronounce your name. Like, I've heard my <laughs> name butchered. What's the craziest you've heard people butcher your name? Uh, not too crazy, but like, you know, uh, maybe like snow. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Asia? No, but you know, it's like funny, like, if I get in an Uber, for example, the GPS, you know, the voice yeah. says like, pick up snow. And then the driver thinks <laughs> my name is snow. <laughs> I have to explain it to them. Oh, that is so but what does your name even mean? It's a long story. Uh, I wasn't born with it. Um, my, the name mm. I was born with was Shahzad. It's a Persian name. And yeah. snow is just a nickname. And then I made it my artist name. Wow. It's my, it's, my, it's my legal name now. Snow is my legal name. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. And, and, and I see that you grew up in various parts of the world. You know, there's Sweden, there's Stockholm, and, and now you're out in the UK. Um, and I'm sure you are exposed to various sounds growing up. How, how, did, how did all the music you heard growing up inspired you to become the artist you are now? So I'm not in the UK. I live in Los oh, Angeles. In LA, I mean. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm born and raised in Sweden. Um, yeah, I was just very drawn to soul R&B from a very young age, um, super young age. And, you know, I think I heard, you know, first time I heard Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey, Michael Jackson. I was just drawn mm -hmm. into what they were doing and their voices and, you know, really got deep into music. I always knew that I wanted to be a singer. Wow. Mm. No, I mean, you've captured so many fans around the world. Us in South Africa love your music. Everybody is singing to it. What do you believe makes your music so relatable that it is able to break through borders, you know, transcend like ge geographical spaces? Thank you. That means a lot. And I really want to come visit South Africa. Uh, I heard I have fans there. <laughs> you do. Um, Honestly, I don't, I don't know. I just write from my, my truth, to be honest. It's my story that I'm writing about. And, and it's great to know that people can relate to it because sometimes I can feel very lonely in my feelings and my thoughts when I write a song and, and feel what I feel. So knowing people can relate to it and understand it uh, or, or have their own meaning to the songs is really beautiful to me. It, it means everything. You know, when you say you feel lonely, like a part of me starts feeling some type of way because one can only imagine when you get to the position that you're in now, you have so many people around you and people to, you know, lean on when you're going through tough times. Is, is the industry and the level you add right now um, the same way you had imagined it to be or you've just realized that it's really lonely at the top? Um... I feel like I've always been careful with who I surround myself with. I've always, I, I'm very close with my family and my team, my core team is my family. My manager is my cousin and you know, and my brother-in-law is no ID. Like we are family for real. So uh, I'm very blessed to have real people around me. And yeah, I have noticed that like, I don't have a lot of real friends. That's mm. something I've been thinking about a lot lately as well. I know a lot of people, you know, if you're in the music industry and entertainment period, you, you're going to know a lot of people and really cool people, you know, it's, you know, there's a lot of great people, but you may not be best friends with everybody. Um, it could be kind of lonely, you know, uh, just knowing or, 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 you know, you don't know who you're going to, who you can trust, what people want from you. I think that's uh, the, you know, the craziest thing, the bigger you get, mm. it's harder to trust. Yeah. I'm not a star. Yeah. Now I know as, as an artist, we draw inspiration from everything around us. And with you speaking on how close knit you are, or the team around you is, is so small. Do you feel like that would have a negative effect in any way on, on the work that you create? 
because it's, it's a, it, it sounds like, do I let people in? I don't want to let people in. Do you think that your experience of life could be hindered with that type of thinking and in turn affect your music? Um, I'm very, I, I would say I'm a very consistent person. So I haven't changed from, mm. like I'm the same person I was just a few years ago when, you know, I just started getting recognition for, for the music and I have the same people around me. And I actually think that's very important to have the mm. same people around you. Um, I'm not scared to, you know, um, I'm not scared to uh, uh, experience life and new people. I give people a chance all the time. I'm just very, uh, I'm just aware. Um, I'm just, yeah. that, that's all, and it's important, but I love meeting new people all the time. And especially, you know, new fans and just, I love meeting new people and I, I, I just, I'm, I love people. <laughs> Although I'm an introvert, I love people and I, uh, it's not that I just, you know, never meet people and don't talk to anybody. Like, I'm mm. open and I'm, I'm very, I give everybody, you know, a chance. But you learn to not give people too many chances. Like you, I, I think my patience has got like, my tolerance is like way lower. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. yeah, and 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 now that you you're saying you have like low tolerance, or you know you you can only take so much as a person. When when you are disappointed or or things just don't go your way at this level, do you get angry in public or you just do it <laughs> when you when you by yourself because you know you know the media longs for that moment, snow wilds out, but you don't have that kind of PR around you. You just very clean when one looks you up online you know i think i'm yeah we keep it real <laughs> whatever happens happens for real it's we're not gonna plan some publicity stunt of me raging on the streets <laughs> yeah. and, and, and a normal day for you what does that look like i mean now with the COVID and, and everything that's happening in the world with this pandemic, um, my life has, you know, it, it looks very different from it, it usually does. So right now, I, you know, wake up in the mornings, I, I love to sit, you know, on my balcony and think for a bit, eat my breakfast, and then I go to the studio. I actually, I'm very fortunate and lucky uh, that I can work on recording and, and doing that as much as I can. Um, mm. That's been like what I'm doing for the most right now, I would say. Mm. And I try to work out. Um, I'm away from my family. It's very hard for me. They are all in Sweden. So that's been, it's really getting to me. Uh, I hope the borders open up soon so that they can come visit or I can go. But if I go, I will be stuck there. So I have to think about when I'm going to go there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And speaking of your work, as you had just formally mentioned, before we get to what you like the new release, I went through your catalog and your projects like Don't Explain and Feels. It looked like there was a similar theme when it came to covers and also you featuring multiple artists. And then I went over to oh, those feels again, the album that <laughs> broke everybody's hearts and mended it at the same time. It felt like there was a change, a shift from what your album cover looked like to you having no features. Do you think there was a particular catalyst for this musical turning point? Because it looked like two completely different artists. Right, I mean, it was like the first time kind of like really putting my face on the cover, I guess. Yeah. yeah. For a few projects at least. Um, I did have a shift in my energy. I kind of, uh, I was more, um, I don't know, it was a different energy when I made that album. I was uh, in a more happy place, I would say, compared mm. to the other albums. I was kind of going through a lot of things. I was kind of depressed, I would say, on feels and don't explain, um, to be honest, mm. to be completely honest. When I was making up those feels again, I was a very positive happy person uh, even when i was doing the negative sad songs i was still laughing having fun in the studio i wasn't taking yeah. it so seriously you know music is so serious and recording and my work is so i take myself very seriously but i kind of let loose and i had fun and i think that was the difference in my energy 
and I've kind of kept that spirit going. Mm. You know, yeah. when you say letting loose and being serious, one thing I picked up from the song uh, "Dying for Love." You know, it, it's one of those songs where I can I can sense your vulnerability in music. Um, at, at the same time, simultaneously, I can I can tell that you 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 know you feel like you're longing for that second guessing that distant love you know someone who's here but they're not here when it comes to being open and being vulnerable in writing music and and articulating yourself with music what do you sometimes find hard to pin down uh, to pin down or you just let yourself loose when it comes to making music with no fear i think i've always let myself loose when mm. i make music uh, like uh, as a person i'm very private um i'm kind of hard to like uh, crack through people say always that I'm very hard to read when they meet me and I'm kind of the opposite in my music I really pour out all my emotions and feelings um, so I think that's you know the contrast you, you, you kind of get to know me more through my music or as a stranger you can get to know me a, a lot through my music um, so yeah I think that's a that's a contrast okay mm. I like that because one would listen to your music and then immediately feel like I can meet you and come for a hug. You know, because <laughs> I feel like Snow's gonna hug me back, but you got all the security around you, but I'll be intimidated. But it's good to know. Maybe not, not maybe not with, maybe not with coronavirus going on. <laughs> <laughughs> it's really weird. Like I do not I d I don't know. I can't really hug people. I don't shake people's hands anymore. Yeah. Mm. It's weird. It's really weird. Yeah. I don't know how is it over there do you guys well we just Ooh. reached so we had four we have four levels to this lockdown it's called the lockdown uh -huh. it's government mm -hmm. trying to control our movement um mm -hmm. so we can avoid the spread of COVID 19. so yeah. we've been on lockdown for just over 130 something days odd days mm -hmm. um yeah. now we today is day one of level two and it's new year's Yes, day. it's New Year's Day because now it means we can go to the gym. We can now okay. buy alcohol. We, oh, we can wow. get alcohol. We okay. can now buy cigarettes. We can now go to the parks. We can now fly domestically. What else, Altavis? We can literally just see our loved ones and families without fear of the cops finding us. Yeah. And you're allowed to be, you know, in a but with restaurants being open now also. It has to be uh, 50 people max. So today is okay. yes. a good brand new year. That's good. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, but it is scary. Similar to, I don't, our gyms are not open in LA. Uh, restaurants are open, but you know, limited seats and uh, stuff like that. But you know, everything else is closed. With the images we see coming out of America, videos included, it doesn't look like America ever closed, actually. You don't think it's ever closed? <laughs> it doesn't look, compared to like how we were on lockdown. Yeah, we I don't think, use. yeah. They should have done a more, I feel like other countries have done a better, mm. uh, yeah. with would, their lockdowns, to be honest, yeah. Would you consider yourself um, <laughs> someone that is interested in politics? Uh, I mean, not real. I mean, I, I try to follow it, but yeah, I stay away from it. And, you know, I just, yeah, mm. yeah, do my best. Uh, yeah, I get into the things that I'm passionate about. Uh, but other than that, it's kind of, it's very draining. It's, I, I stop, you know, looking at the news. It's, it's too much for me. Yeah. Definitely. So, talking yeah. about politics, you know, uh, you also shared your limited edition merch. Uh, you know, featuring items that were inspired by, you know, the, the Dying for the Love video, you know, as well as the 2019 project, you know, um, you had 50% of the sales proceeds going to the Until, Free uh, Until Freedom, an organization that fights against systematic, you know, and racial injustice. What are your thoughts around racial inequality right now in the world? You know, with music, we're seeing it also in sports, the likes of Lewis Hamilton, you know, raising their fists in the air just to raise awareness. Is this something you've experienced personally as someone who's traveled the world? Um, I mean, I can say, you know, racism to me has always existed. And, and I'm glad that, you know, people are more, 
it's shed more light on it right now. People are just mm. more aware. I mean, I grew up in Sweden and you know, I'm an Iranian. Uh, my, my parents are Iranian. So I was born and raised in Sweden. And to me, Sweden is my home, you know? Yeah. And yeah. growing up for me, it was so weird sometimes in school, I would have other kids tell me like, yo, uh, you know, go back to the country that you're from. And, you know, I would hear like really racist comments or like, you know, just like, it, it was just very weird because um, growing up, you know, in a country, you feel like it's your home, but you don't look like everyone else in your class. I was, at one point, yeah. I was the only immigrant in my class in kindergarten and stuff like that, or in school, because I grew up in a small city in Sweden. And I remember it was just so weird to me, and I didn't feel comfortable all the way in my, my own skin. So it's just been, you know, a whole journey with that. And it's, it's just something I've always encountered um, almost anywhere that I've been. It's kind of sad, but I'm, I'm happy people are more woke now and people are using their voices. And, you know, um, I think it's just so important that people unite and, and uh, fight for a change. Mm. Yeah. Speaking as someone that is different and who noticed the difference, what's the biggest misconception people have about you and all your music? Uh, I think sometimes if they don't know my full story, it could be kind of a uh, trick, not tricky, I would say everybody doesn't know that I'm Iranian, that I'm born and raised in Sweden. Um, they don't kind of, everybody don't know my struggle. I think misconception can be, yeah. be sometimes that it's been easy for me or something, but it, it never has. I, I've had it really, really tough. I had to like fight 10 times harder than a lot of people to get to where I am right now. So uh, I think, yeah, if you don't know yeah. my journey, you don't really know the whole story basically. basically so yeah. Snow, thank you very much for taking the time of day to chat to us and, and just allowing us this time to, to pick your brain. We, we celebrate you this side. We love the music and just, and just keeping open uh, to telling your story because music is the closest thing we can all just, you know, relate to when uh, we don't have access to. So this is definitely going to be an amazing way to also connect you with some of your fans this side and hopefully your team will explore a tour in South Africa. I appreciate you guys yeah. and I, yeah, I cannot wait to be able to travel and come and, and perform there. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much, Snow. Have a great day further. Thank you. You too. <laughs>